Hey guys, what's up? So welcome back to today's video and we are going to discuss one super cool chapter of chemistry grade 11 and the chapter is chemical bonding. Yeah, you're right. We are talking about bond. We are talking about love between different atoms. Let's get started with the chapter. Okay, so tell me one thing. I'll start with a story. Let's say there is a guy, okay, and there is this girl and they are standing very far away from each other. Very far away. Do you think they'll be happy? I don't think so. You know, there's this guy and this girl standing far away from each other. They won't be happy. And both of them are like very good looking. They're very like, wow. Fine. So what will happen? They'll start coming close to each other. They'll start talking to each other. They will become friends with each other. Oh, wow. So now they are friends, talking, talking, talking. Some good things happening, happening. And then they become girlfriend and boyfriend. This is what happens, right? So now in my definition, I'll not call this boy as boyfriend, girl as girlfriend. That's not my cup of tea. I will call him banda, bandi in love with each other. Right? So there was a guy, there was a girl, they fell in love with each other and we said this Banda Bandi relationship is there. Banda is boyfriend, Bandi is girlfriend. Okay? Now you tell me, can I say when this Banda and Bandi were talking, they were becoming friends, there was some force of attraction which was responsible for their relationship? Don't you think if they were not at all attracted to each other, if there was nothing, there was no bond between them, they would never be committed, right? But I am telling you that there is some force of attraction which holds Bandha and Bandi together, right? And this force of attraction between Bandha and Bandi is what is known as a bond. Bond is nothing but it's love, okay? Now, it's not that this love thing is there only in human beings. It's also there in atoms. Obviously, we all are made up of atoms, right? So, atoms also fall in love with each other. Now, let me start with the chapter that we are going to discuss is chemical bonding. Okay? So, see. What happened? Let us say there was an atom. Atom A. And there was another atom. Atom B. When they were far away from each other, atom A was maybe here, atom B was maybe there, they were not happy alone. This atom was like, I'm not happy. This atom was like, I'm not happy. So what they did? They started coming close to each other. When they came close to each other, something happened and a compound or you can say a molecule AB was formed. Now the question rises, why were they not happy without each other? When they were present alone, I said they were not happy. But when they formed a molecule, they became happy. What happened between this and this that they formed a molecule? This is all what we will be studying in the chapter chemical bonding. Now, what happened? This is not what I am saying. This was proved by so many scientists and we will be studying the definitions or the theories given by different, different scientists. So the first two persons who gave the definition or who gave the theory about bonding between the atoms were Cossel and Lewis and they gave Cossel Lewis approach or causal Lewis theory about the atoms. Now see what happened. Lewis said that or we can say Lewis said that there was an atom and instead of studying an atom as a nucleus with the electrons revolving around the nucleus, he said atom is made up of two parts. One is kernels and one is valence electrons. Let me tell you what is kernel. Let us consider sodium which is 2 comma 8 comma 1, right? Sodium is having 11 protons, 11 neutro electrons and we can say sodium is having 12 neutrons, okay? So this is the nucleus and these are the two electrons in the first shell. 
these are the eight electrons in the second shell and this is one last electron in the third shell okay now this nucleus along with all the shells other than the outermost shell what I'm trying to say the nucleus plus all shells other than valence shell so I'm talking about this particular thing so nucleus along with all shells other than the valence shell this complete thing is known as kernel okay and you know since we are talking not about the valence shell that means the number of electrons are lesser than the number of protons so I can say kernel is positive part of the atom okay so Lewis was more and more interested in the kernels and he said I will be talking about valence electrons separately fine now Lewis said that an atom would be stable if and only if the valence shell has eight electrons or two electrons only if the valence shell has three electrons it's not stable if it has seven electrons it's not stable so for an atom to be stable the valence shell has to have only two numbers may it be two or may it be eight if the valence shell is having two electrons it is said to be duplet complete okay that two electrons are there and duplet is complete if the valence shell is to have eight electrons we say octet is complete other than these two cases no other case is stable now for example I'll just take the atom of any noble gas let us talk about helium and let us talk about neon helium is 2 4 neon is 10 20 you know this thing right so how, how can I write the electronic configuration of helium I'll just write 2 that means this is a nucleus and this shell is having two electrons understood how I'll write neon 2 comma 8 so this is a nucleus two electrons are here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 electrons are there now what is kernel in this case since this is a valence shell so only this is a kernel and since this is the nucleus and this is one shell so this part is kernel how many electrons are there in the valence shell there are two so can I say duplet is complete yes duplet is complete and here eight electrons are there in valence shell so I can say octet is complete that's it so if any atom is having the electronic configuration as duplet complete or it is having the configuration as octet complete only in these two kind of cases atoms can exist alone you know they are like saints they are like sadhu mahatma they do not want to get married to anyone they are happy in the way they are right so these are what are known as noble gases they do not want to combine with anyone they are happy one here is happy one there is happy they will not at all come close to each other understood but if we take any other case let us talk about mm, sodium nucleus I'm just representing the valence electrons because you are smart enough you can simply write 281 right now let me write chlorine so this is the nucleus 287 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this entire is the, is the kernel this entire is the kernel am I right now is it the this is a valence shell right is it having octet complete mm -mm, no it is not having octet complete it's just having one electron is it having octet complete no it is deficient of one electron so octet is not complete that means such kind of atoms sodium and chlorine they will never 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 be happy to exist alone fine so when sodium is here chlorine is here they are not at all happy to be present alone they will be thinking something in their mind what should we do in order to become happy and this is what we come to the rule which is known as 
octet rule which was given by Lewis. So octet rule simply says that if there is an atom which is not having its octet complete or duplet complete, okay, then the atom would try to do something. Maybe it will try to lose electrons, maybe it will try to gain electrons, maybe it will try to share electrons, but anyhow or the other it wants its octet to be complete. Understood? So every atom which is present alone, which is not stable, is not stable because of the fact that its octet is not complete. Agar anyhow the other its octet is getting complete, it would be very happy to complete the octet. Understood? So this was all about what was said by Cossel Lewis that everyone wants to attain a stable octet. Done? Now what happened was, how should we attain stable octet? Okay. We understood the fact that if octet is not complete, we won't be stable. We want to acquire complete octet. But how? It can be done in three ways. I'll show you what these three ways are. The first possibility is formation of ionic bond. You know, I generally call it as the concept of arrange marriage. Do use your earphones, okay? Otherwise, your parents will kill me. I don't want to be killed. I'm like, I love my life, man. So, please use earphones. So, this is the concept of arranged marriage. What is there in arranged marriage? Let's say this is Banda. This is Bandi. So, her parents, if they are getting arranged marriage, her parents will discuss something, something with his parents. So, what will happen? They will give something to his parents. They will give something to her parents and hence they will get married, right? So, there is this lendain relationship, right? There is this giving and taking relationship. That is what is the concept of arranged marriage, right? Similarly, what happens in the case of ionic bond? We have sodium, which is 2 at 1. If sodium loses this one electron, which is a valence electron, it forms Na plus and it lost one electron. Now Na plus has eight electrons in its valence shell and hence we can say octet is complete, right? Now there was another thing which is chlorine 287. Oops, chlorine is having seven electrons in valence shell. It's not stable. So this chlorine will gain the same electron given by sodium to form Cl minus 1 and its electronic configuration becomes 288C, it got stable octet completion. Understood? So what happened? There was Na which lost one electron, there was Cl which gained the same electron. So Na is losing, Cl is gaining. And when Na was losing and Cl was gaining, Na becomes positively charged, Cl becomes negatively charged. And what happens? You know, right, positive and negative species cannot be present away from each other. So when positive and negative are there, unlike attract each other, right? So they can quickly combine with each other. When they quickly combine with each other, it leads to the formation of a compound which is NaCl. Understood? So I generally ask students that what is a bond? We say that a bond is formed between them which is known as ionic bond. They say that ma'am, bond may be you know a line joining two atoms or it may be a thread joining two atoms. So it's not a line, it's not a thread. It is just that love, it is just that force of attraction which holds two atoms together. In this case, the force of attraction which is holding a cation and anion together is known as ionic force of attraction which is also given another name as electrovalent force of attraction. Understood? So this is the first category of how two atoms which were not happy earlier, they combine with each other to become stable. Okay, so this was the first approach of ionic bond formation, which in my terms is kind of arranged marriage. Understood? Now let us go on to second approach. Let us see what the second approach says. It says that we are talking about the concept of love marriage. 
super good, super cool. What happens? There is this banda, there is this bandi, they fall in love with each other, there is no lane relationship, right? They do not give anything to each other, but they share something and what they share is love, right? So what happens? Let us consider the example of hydrogen. There are two hydrogen atoms and if I write hydrogen, it is one. So electronic configuration is one, that means it has just one electron. Let me represent one electron like this. Now another hydrogen, it has one electron. Let me represent it like this. Now both of the two hydrogens are not having duplet complete. They are having just one one. That means the duplet is not complete. So what they do, this hydrogen goes to this hydrogen and says, Yaar, can I borrow one electron from you? So hydrogen says, cool man, take one. And this hydrogen says, yeah, can I please borrow one from you as well? So he says, okay, man. So see, this gave one electron to this and this took one electron from this, but it's not full exchange taking place. Both the two electrons are belonging to this hydrogen. At the same time, both these two electrons are belonging to this atom hydrogen. Understood? So we can draw a line joining these two atoms. This is just imagination there is no such line which joins atom okay there is no such thread which joins atom and this line represents the involvement of two electrons which is formed by sharing and this is what is the force of attraction which holds them together when two atoms combine with each other in this particular way this is known as covalent bond formation. That's it. Understood? So this was the second approach with the help of which two atoms can come close to each other to form a molecule. Let us move on to the last approach which as such is not given in NCRT, which as such could not be defined as a new approach but we all know this is very famous which is a concept of one-sided love. And I think many of you know about what one-sided love is, right? So let us say this is Banda and this is Bandi. Bandi fell in love with Banda, but so she gave her heart to that Banda, but Banda was like, oh man, I don't care. Or other way around, let us say Banda gave his heart to Bandi and like he fell in love with Bandi, but Bandi was like, mm -hmm, I don't give, I don't want you, right? So what happens in such category? Let us see. Let us take the example of NH3BF3, okay? Or let me simply take an example of NH3H+. And let us first try to understand. Suppose there is an atom A, which is having two electrons, okay? And these are kind of excess with A. And there is another atom B, which has no electrons at all, which needs electrons. But A says that I have extra electron, B says that I have nothing to give to you. So A says that it's okay man, don't worry, I will just give you two electrons. So when sharing of electron takes place, but not by both the two atoms, it is taking place only from one atom. So when one atom or one molecule is giving two electrons to the other, so this is one sided thing and this is known as coordinate bond. Okay, I hope this concept is clear in terms of Bandha Bandhi and any atom A and B. Now let us apply it to practical situation. Let us talk about NH3 and H+. H has one electron but when H loses this electron it becomes H+. Right? So H plus is having zero electrons. I hope you agree. Now what happens? This is ammonia. How I'm drawing the structure, I'll tell you in the next video. Let us say it has two extra electrons. How they came, again, I'll tell you in next video. Now, this is H+, plus. it has zero electrons, is really unhappy because its octet is not complete. So, nitrogen thinks that, what if I give both my pair of electrons to this H+, plus? so now it is one-sided love being shown from nitrogen to H+. Plus. So donation is done of two electrons, but 
only one atom is giving these two electrons okay and this kind of a bond is covalent only why because here sharing of electrons is occurring okay but this is little different from covalent bond because in covalent bond one was giving one electron other was giving one electron both were equally contributing but here only one is giving electrons to other so this has been given special name as coordinate bond understood so see i told you three different types in which two atoms which were not happy without each other they came close to each other and formed molecules understood so this was just the introduction of what we are going to study in the chapter chemical bonding now all my upcoming videos will be like the details of ionic bonding details of covalent bonding and details of coordinate bonding that's it so we will be discussing all the details in maybe the upcoming videos but for today i think this much is enough so i'll see you soon thank you very much bye bye